Hi, my name is Saro. This video is an introduction to using Liquid Rhythm in Ableton Live with the Push controller. Editing MIDI in Ableton Live directly through Liquid Rhythm via the Max for Live bridge. Let's take a look at this setup. I've got Liquid Rhythm on the right side here, running as a plugin in Ableton Live, which is on the left. The plugin system that's being used here is special because it does something really powerful and exciting. It provides a bridge that lets Liquid Rhythm look inside Ableton Live's MIDI clips and edit their contents directly. By selecting any MIDI clip in Live, Liquid Rhythm automatically loads it and displays the notes in its editor. Once a clip has been loaded, Liquid Rhythm's MIDI editing tools can be used to compose an experiment. The plugin bridge copies all of your edits back into your MIDI clip in Ableton Live automatically. This bridge is made possible by the powerful Max for Live system in Ableton Live. Here's a very quick example. I'm going to create an empty clip and select it. I'm going to hit play and then quickly build the rhythm track using Liquid Rhythm. This list contains note sequences that are one bar long. So I'm gonna grab a pattern and I'm gonna drop it into my kick track. Next, I'll do the same for my snares. Notice how every sequence that I drag over gets automatically copied into my clip in live. I'll add another sequence for my hi-hats. This also works the other way around as well. Edits made in live are transferred over into Liquid Rhythm when I click in its window. I'm going to keep live open for the rest of this video, so keep an eye on how the contents of my live clip changes while I use Liquid Rhythm. Working with color-coded note clusters. I'm going to zoom in so we can take a closer look at Liquid Rhythm's unique visualization of MIDI. The diamonds are the notes, the bars above are the velocities. The shapes and colors below provide a view into the rhythmic structure of your music. One of the benefits these structures provide is that they group notes together into little clusters. In my panel below, I have a library of palettes that contain various note clusters. For this example, I've selected a palette that contains three very basic clusters. These are objects that we can play with. They can be grabbed from this palette and dropped anywhere. Notice that they're various colors. The clusters are color-coded according to the number of notes and rests within them. This first one is purple, and it contains one note right at the beginning. My hi-hat track above contains four of them. This second cluster is blue. It's the same size as the purple one, but it contains two notes. Here's what my hi-hats sound like when I replace a few of the purple clusters with the blue ones. This red cluster contains three notes. It's a triplet. I'm gonna throw that on the end of my hi-hat pattern. There are many different clusters in these palettes, each one containing various combinations of notes and rests. Now, instead of individually dragging and dropping clusters to create patterns, Liquid Rhythm has a sequencer that can be used to quickly turn on or off clusters in each beat of the bar. There are eight columns for beat locations, and currently three rows containing the three clusters from our palette. The highlights are the clusters that are currently on in my bar. Notice the pattern I created earlier with the blue, purple, and red clusters. I can turn on or off any beat in the bar by clicking on the highlights, and I can swap clusters in each beat by selecting them. Sequencing color-coded note clusters with Ableton Push. Liquid Rhythm's MIDI script for Ableton Push provides control over many features in Liquid Rhythm. You can navigate over your arrangement, adjust velocities of notes, cut, copy, and paste regions, and much more. However, the most powerful and fun control is this. The Push's grid of color RGB pads can be used to sequence Liquid Rhythm's color-coded note clusters. Remember the rows of purple, blue, and red clusters? Here they are on the push. The first row allows me to insert the purple one, which contains the one note in whichever beat I activate. 
The second, blue row, allows me to insert the blue cluster, which contained two notes. And the red row contains the clusters with three notes. I want to add one more cluster to my sequencer, so I'll need to find it in my palette. It's a variation of the blue one, except the first note is actually a rest, it's silent, leaving the second note in the middle. I'm adding this particular one to my sequencer because it's great for creating patterns with syncopation and groove. Notice that it got added to the fourth row on my push as well. Okay, so let's put this all together. I've got my push grid at the top, its corresponding sequencer pattern below, a bar in liquid rhythm of the hi-hat track that I'm editing, and its corresponding notes in my live MIDI clip. Let's improvise and create a hi-hat pattern. So I'll insert a cluster with one note, then three notes, and again one note, two notes, again two notes, a rest and a note, another rest and a note, and then three notes at the end. What's really powerful about this is that I can experiment really quickly. If I wanted to switch the last triplet for two notes instead, I'll just tap the last beat for that row. Notice that all the changes that I'm making to my pattern are also being copied automatically into my clip in live. A quick way to set every step in my sequencer to one particular cluster is to touch the pitch bend slider. Now, the overall workflow is very quick. Select the clip you'd like to edit using the range view on the push. Then tap user mode to control liquid rhythm. When you'd like to select another clip to edit, flip back to Ableton Live mode and tap another clip to select it. Using Ableton's push controller with liquid rhythm is an exciting way to experiment with your rhythm tracks. It lets you program your ideas into Ableton Live very quickly by providing a color-coded interface for inspiring rhythmic improvisation. Thanks for watching.